Nemo Radio is on the air. A, B, C. A, always B, B, C. Closing. Always be closing. Always be closing. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. Come after me! I'm a man! I'm 40! Hey, it's John Nemo. Welcome back to another episode of Nemo Radio. So glad that you are joining me because I'm about to rant. <laughs> I just, I can't help it. I, this is fascinating to me. So I'm a big podcast listener. And one of my favorite podcasts is a just local sports talk radio show, just kind of mindless listening. They're bantering about all the Minnesota sports teams that I follow and all the woes, which are many for Minnesota sports fans. But what I've noticed with the medium of podcasting, at least for this particular network of shows, what they've done is they're, again, they're trying to apply... 1980s style interruption advertising to a podcast, but they're taking it to a whole different level. And here's what I mean by this. They're actually, they've changed it in recent weeks where normally you could kind of tell when the ad would be coming because the host would be ending a segment and you could tell they were going to break. And then whoever was editing their podcast file would just drop in the ads, right? Now what they've been doing is in mid-sentence, while the host is talking, it's kind of like this scratchy record, like bloop, and then they launch into 60 seconds of ads. I kid you not, like, while the guy is talking, he doesn't even finish a sentence sometimes, and all of a sudden you're getting hammered with ads for, like, new tires and personal injury attorneys, and it's unbelievable to me, but it illustrates really the desperation that you're seeing with outdated, ineffective, inefficient advertising models. And the number one model that is will not die, it's like a zombie that keeps coming back, is this old school interruption advertising. You know, you didn't ask for this. You're not necessarily interested in this. You didn't opt in. You didn't raise your hand to learn more. We're just going to hammer you with an ad for dish soap or beer or whatever it is. And it just really, I knew I had to turn this into my own podcast, which, bloop, please buy all my stuff. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) See, that's the idea. Like, you would get so frustrated listening to a podcast and they just interrupt. And what kills me about it is it doesn't work or the effectiveness of this has to be so diminished by now that it's like 0.0001%, right? I mean, it just doesn't seem realistic or like it's going to actually work. And it feels to me like these advertisers don't know what else to do, at least in the medium of podcasting. And it's just kind of almost this farce or comical level now of interruption and the lesson for you and I is very simple is if we hate being marketed to this way then we shouldn't market that way ourselves and I take this over to my favorite platform LinkedIn where every single day you and I get inundated with interruptions interruptions in our LinkedIn inbox and invitations people just blatantly directly interrupting us offering a product offering a service or worse, asking for time, asking for money, asking for attention when we didn't say that we even wanted to do that. And what I've really perfected over on LinkedIn and what I do with all my clients and my own marketing there is not interrupting people in that way. So what you're going to do is obviously... I've gone through all this in LinkedIn Riches, in the book, the online course, everything else. Number one, you have a client-facing kind of hyper-niched profile. So it's all about how you help this one audience get a benefit that they would want, you know, in the services you provide. So ideally, if you're setting yourself up right on LinkedIn with your LinkedIn headline, your profile, all those things, now when you're approaching prospects on LinkedIn, they know within two seconds that you're someone that can help them, in theory, get a benefit they want. 
So just to make this really clear, a simple example, when I first started marketing myself on LinkedIn, uh, when I opened a marketing agency, I went hyper niche focused. I wanted to sell marketing services to debt collection agencies. That was my target audience. That was going to be the niche where I wanted to get rich, right? So my LinkedIn headline, instead of saying John Nemo, CEO, whatever, 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 it just said John Nemo. And then my LinkedIn professional headline was debt collection marketing services. So now when I would reach out, out to you on LinkedIn, if you were a debt collector, you saw an inbound invitation from me, it showed John Nemo, and then my LinkedIn headline, Debt Collection Marketing Services. So I knew as a debt collector, oh, if I connect with this guy, if I start messaging with him, that's what he does. He helps people like me with my marketing. So what happens is when you go on LinkedIn with that hyper niched approach, And in theory, you're targeting the exact people that might want your service or product. And it's clear to them when they look at your profile that you're all about them and helping them get what they want, which is straight out of Dale Carnegie and how to win friends and influence people and everything else that's great about sales. Once they see that, now you can, quote, interrupt them, but in a much different way. And this is really old school, classic sales that is more the consultative method, the Socratic method, asking questions. So what I do on LinkedIn, and I've talked about this script you know, in a million different places, is when I make a connection with you and I break the ice and maybe I'll talk about the weather where you're living or notice the school that you went to or talk about something on your profile that caught my attention, break the ice, have a little chit chat. And then instead of immediately interrupting you with an offer or a request or asking for something, what I do is I use a very simple script. There's just four parts. One is I I ask a question. I say, curious, are you interested in blank? And blank would be the benefit that they might want. So let's say right now I want to sell you you know, lead generation services on LinkedIn. I would say, curious, are you interested in getting new leads from LinkedIn? That would be the question, right? So you just insert the service or benefit you want to provide this client. Curious, are you interested in blank? Then the second sentence is you offer something of value. You don't include the link. You don't assume they want it. You just offer it. You say, the reason I ask is I've got a great free blank ebook, on-demand webinar, free video training, magazine, whatever it is, um, consultation, uh, which I'd be happy to share if you're interested. And then the third part is, and this is key, is you ask permission. What you say then is, if you'd like to check it out, just reply yes or thumbs up emoji. So that way the person has a very simple call to action on their mobile phone to hit thumbs up or hit yes or hit thank you. to to say, yes, I want to see what you have. And then the fourth and final part of this message is you take off the pressure. You say, and if you're not interested, no worries at all. Now, what that does is that really qualifies people ahead of time. You and I get so upset and so offended when someone emails us or sends us a one-on-one LinkedIn message, including links, including attachments, as if we wanted to read more stuff, right? (laughs) Like, there's enough content we can't get to already. Why do you assume I want to read your blog post on leadership? I'm sure it's great, but I didn't ask for it. I'm not interested. I feel offended. I feel infringed upon. That's how these prospects now look at the one-on-one LinkedIn messaging experience, as opposed to honoring them and their position and saying, hey, look, I don't even know if you're interested in this, but if you are, I've got a great free resource that I think would really help, but I'm only going to share it if you want it. So if you'd like it, you know, just hit yes or reply yes. Otherwise, no problem, no worries, I'll get out of your hair. And what happens is then nobody gets mad, nobody gets offended because you're asking them and then you know seeking permission to help them with something you think should be of interest because you've niched it into their world. And where this really shows up effectively is people then self-qualify. They say, yeah, actually, I am looking to get leads with LinkedIn. What do you got? Send me the free ebook. Send me the webinar link. I want to check it out. Then you can start winning them over. And just to circle back to the beginning of the rant was like, that's why this interruption model doesn't work. And that's why you can't continue to do outdated, obsolete methods with lead generation. You've really got to adapt to today's technology and today's tools and methods. But the good news is, whether you're, you know, 16 or 65 or 75, it's the same thing. You're just communicating with human beings. 
And the way that you've always, you know, influenced people and made sales and made friends is doing, you know, what Dale Carnegie talks about in his book he wrote in 1936, How to Win Friends and Influence People. He said, people do not care about you. They do not care about me. They care about themselves morning, noon, and after supper. He also said, we are not dealing with creatures of logic. We are dealing with creatures of emotion. And he also finally said, I'm reading three quotes I have printed out on my desk. Uh, he knew how to handle people, and that is what made him rich. When he was talking about one of the you know famous gajillionaire entrepreneurs he interviewed in the 30s. And this is all good news for you and me. We don't have to suddenly master some new technology or ninja tricks or tactics. We just have to do this. We have to remember that when you're messaging on a platform like LinkedIn or even email, there is a human being on the other end with all kinds of concerns and worries and self-centeredness about his or her own life. They're already busy, stressed out, kids didn't get their homework done, dog puked on the carpet, whatever happened. You've got to remember that's a real person. How, how do you like to be treated when you get marketed to? Do you like to be interrupted and spammed and just have offers and content shoved down your throat that you didn't ask for? Or is it refreshing when someone says, hey, how are you? How's the weather in Minneapolis? Curious too, I know you are a small business owner. Are you looking for ways to blank? The reason I ask is we actually put together a great free training. I'm happy to share a link, but only if you're interested. No worries if not. You know, just reply yes if you'd like to see it. If not, no problem. Hope you're having a great day. Like, I, I don't mind getting marketed to that way. I'm like, that's nice. You're letting me choose, right? And I can say no thank you or not even reply. And the person isn't consistently bugging me, so to speak. And that's really the lesson in this is to stop interrupting and assuming people want your stuff because they don't. <laughs> I to tell you right now, nobody wants more of my stuff. What they do want to do is solve their core problems. What they do want to do is get out of whatever pain they're in. But I have to start by asking them about that. Are you looking for a solution to this? Are you looking for help in this area? And then if they say yes, that opens the door for you to step in with your content that will demonstrate expertise get you moving, get you showing them how you can help. So all that said, I'm just still going to keep listening to my favorite podcast. And just like now it's like a game of like whack-a-mole, like the arcade where they pop up and you have to hit them with the hammer. Like I just have to figure out the ads are going to come in at some second and they'll be in the middle of a great story and talking about it. And then they get to the climax and all of a sudden, bloop, and then there's an ad for soap or beer. And I'm just like, you got to be kidding me. But anyway, it's a humorous story, but I hope you remember it, and I hope it fires you up to do things differently with your own marketing, all right? So if you want free resources, if you want to really implement and apply this, start with my book, LinkedIn Riches, or just go to the website, go to linkedinriches.com, you can get the book for free there, or if you want a bunch of my latest free tips, trainings, videos, templates, all those things, specifically on LinkedIn messaging, how to do all those different things. Go to linkedinriches.com forward slash free. You'll see a page just filled with different topics. There's uh, tutorials on there about LinkedIn messages, scripts, all kinds of things. And that will get you rolling. So thank you again for listening and I'll see you soon on another episode.